Hey friend, welcome to Pursuing Goals God's Way. Have you thought about finally starting that business now that your kids are older? Do you ever stay awake wondering how to mesh your passions into purposeful work? Do you have big, ambitious goals but feel overwhelmed or even unqualified to pursue them? Hey, I'm Gabe. Not too long ago, I longed for the confidence to start an online business. I just wanted to make a difference outside my home bubble using my gifts. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't good enough, I didn't know enough, and I didn't have enough time. Until I realized something huge. My kids need me to be their example, and they need to see me win. And yours do too. In this podcast, you will learn how to clarify your goals, plan with purpose, and ditch your distractions. If you're ready to make an impact and an income, all for the glory of God, then you're in the right place. As an avid runner, I believe life is one massive marathon. It's up to you to run your own race and to finish it well. So lace up those running shoes, pop in your earbuds, and let's do this thing. Hey friend, so glad you popped on to Pursuing Goals God's Way with me today. And before we dive into talking about getting things done, I do want to let you know that the Set Your Fall Up for Success giveaway is here. And it has everything you need to get organized, improve your mindset, maximize your productivity, and live the simpler, more intentional life you may desire. To register for the giveaway, head to redhotmindset.com forward slash fall. You could win one of 26 prizes valued at more than $4,500. I'm excited to be a part of the giveaway hosted by Amber Curtis from Solutions for Simplicity, and I'm giving away my Mind Over Marathon ebook and audiobook bundle. I'm going to help someone finish their goals this year. They're going to take their goals from start to finish. On top of the prizes you can win, there are also some wonderful free resources you could snag just for entering. The giveaway is live and runs through Friday, August 11th, so don't miss it. Again, you can register at redhotmindset.com forward slash fall, and I'll leave a link for easy access in the show notes. I have some fun bundles and giveaways and summits this fall that I'm a part of, so look out for those. I'm super excited to share them with you and be able to just help give you some resources and ways that you can maximize your productivity, that you can start your online business, that you can go after those goals and crush them in 2023. I hope that you win this giveaway though, wink, wink. (laughs) So anyway, the set up your falls for success giveaway, go enter. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. But today we're talking about getting work done. Friend, are you struggling to get work done in your online business? Between a new summer routine, kids at home, changes in activities and all the things, it's hard to find pockets of time to work unless it's super early in the morning before everyone wakes up or really late at night once everyone is in bed. I get it. And now summer is almost over. So this episode is not about summer schedule. It's just about getting work done in general. But let's get real. Either of those options, getting up really early, staying up really late are just no fun. I don't know about you, but I can't keep my eyes open past 9 p.m. these days. And I do get up early. I just, my body wakes up at 5 a.m. every single day. I don't know why, but it does. I just like having that time though to relax, to have it for my quiet time, to read a devotional, be in the word, to journal, and just take time to be. I don't want to think about work at that time. Now, sometimes my mind is spinning and I come up with some fun podcast episodes at that time or whatnot, but I don't want to have it be designated work time. So what's the alternative? Is there really an alternative? How can you find that six to 10 hours a week for your business goals, even with the kids at home? Now, I've always had a full plate with multiple jobs, wearing multiple hats at any given time, and I've learned a few tricks along the way, so I want to share them with you. First, I want you to think about what pockets of time do you have? Now, maybe your kids are in activities and you could bring your work there. Uh, Now, for me, that is parkour. So I don't know if you know what parkour is. It has nothing to do with this episode, but my middle and youngest boys are really into it now. And it's like where you outside are jumping from building to building or doing flips off of a building or, you know, all that crazy stuff. And so anyway, parkour is inside. It's kind of like Ninja Warrior, but not. And so they are two hours at a time, which gives me a little time to work. So I bring my computer with me. And I drive them there, drive them back. But in that work time, 
I really do have focus time to be able to work on either a project or admin things or whatnot. So that really works well. And then also right now, until my son gets his license, my oldest is getting close to that just in the next month or so. But in the afternoon during the summers, he has gymnastics practice. He has two a days. And so a lot of times it's only a couple hours. So I will just sit there and work with my computer. But think about that. What activities are your kids in? Can you bring your computer? Maybe use your hotspot or a lot of times places have internet now and just be able to do that. Look up a little bit, watch them practice, but really get take that designated time. Also, Maybe you do like working early morning or late evening. Maybe you function best in one of those and that's okay. Like I said, I don't really function best there, but if you do take a couple hours at night, once the kids go to bed and, or in the early morning and plan that out, you know, also plan out with your hubby when he can take the kids, maybe, uh, you know, one night a week. Your husband can be like, yep, I got them. I'll play a game with them. I'll watch a movie, whatever it is. You can go to the coffee shop for two to three hours. And that can be a project time for you. You know, I think our husbands, it's not that they don't want to help. It's that we don't ask. And so just having that communication and saying, you know, I would really just appreciate uh, if you could take the kids on Tuesday evenings from, you know, seven to nine maybe get them ready for bed, get them in bed. And I can just hop to the local coffee shop and do some designated work. I know for me, being outside of the home helps me a little bit in a different atmosphere to really just plug in and get things done. So just having that communication, like what works for you? And then also, you know, maybe tag teaming it. So one evening you get that time and the other evening he gets time to go do something that he wants to do, right? So talk to him about that and figure that out. Also, maybe you could, this is something that I've done with friends before, is swap kiddos. So one or two times a month, you could swap with another friend. And so uh, I had a friend who we did this every month while we were both living in Minnesota, and it was awesome. So she would take my kids one full day, and I would take her kids one full day. And the other person, when they didn't have the kids, got to do whatever they wanted. And so a lot of times I would just work on my business. I would go to a coffee shop or go somewhere and work on it because if I were at home, I would just clean or organize or do something at home or think about all the things I have to do. But when I was outside of my space, I could get that done. But that worked great because my kids had so much fun and I didn't have to have this mom guilt that they weren't, I wasn't paying attention to them. And then when I had my friend's kids, they were having fun. So she didn't have that mom guilt and it just worked great. It was a win-win for both of us. Also, school is starting soon. So if your kids go to school, then designate a work block. Even if they're homeschooled, think about what are the things that they can do independently or maybe when it's playtime for them or quiet time, then you can designate a work block for yourself. Whether it's every day or maybe it's just a few days a week and you could just have one or two hours. Think about what can you put in and then really think about it like, If you were going to a job, if you were going to a job, you'd have to go at those specific times, right? And so when you think about that work block, don't think about it as, oh, I don't actually have to do that, you know, or whatever. Just think about it like you are going to your job, right? Um, And then also just set appointments up for yourself. So that work block, put it in your calendar and then show up for yourself. Yes, we have to have flexibility. Sometimes the kids get sick or, you know, uh, an emergency happens or something and that's fine then we deal with it then. But most of the time, if you set that appointment, you can follow through. And if you train your kids in that way too, and they know this is your work time, and if you had a full-time job, you would be going to work. Now you get to be at home, but you do need these couple designated hours to work. So here's the things that they get to do while you're doing that, right? Um, I do this with my workout. I set appointments. I actually put it on my calendar. A lot of times it's early morning, so it doesn't really get in the way of family anyway, but I put it on my calendar and because it's on there, it's a lot easier for me to remember to do, or it's a lot easier for me to do it because I already know I've scheduled space for it. Think about that when it comes to getting work done as well. Okay. Okay. So you've planned it out. You have your work block. Your kids know that it's your work block, but what do you do with the kids? Right? Um, I, (laughs) for sometimes they'll come in and ask me questions or whatever, you know, we've, I've trained them pretty well that if I am on a call that is being recorded, that they're not allowed to interrupt me. 
but in normal circumstances, if they do need something, it's okay for them to come in because, hey, I am still mom. But let's talk about some things that they can do while you're in your work block. Maybe let them do something fun that they may not normally get to do. Maybe you save the screen time for that time. Maybe they get to watch a movie. You know, come up with something that is uh, maybe something they don't get to do as frequently that they would be excited for and maybe be distracted enough not to interrupt you all the time, right? Help them also learn to play solo. You can say, all right, it's quiet time. It's play time. You get to go be creative go do something. And when I'm done with my work, I want to know what you got done, right? I want to see the picture you drew. I want to see the Legos that you created, whatever it is. Let them, my my son, my littlest, just, I realized he really doesn't need toys. He just needs cardboard boxes and he makes cool forts and he makes fun projects. He does lots of things with cardboard boxes and um, he'll spend hours doing it if I let him. But if we don't teach them how to play solo and to get into that creative mode, then they won't do it. They'll think that I'm so bored because I don't have my <laughs> electronics, right? And so um, help them to learn that. Maybe set a timer and go, okay, this is the time that you get to play by yourself. And then at the end of this timer, then we'll come together and I'll get to see what you did. And then maybe we'll play a little bit, right? Maybe give them some reading time. If they can't read yet, give them an audio book. This is a great alternative for a quiet time too. Let them just sit on the couch, relax, listen to the audio book, listen to music, something like that. That'll kind of keep their mind occupied and give them something to follow. But it will also be kind of a learning time as well. Or if they're old enough to read, you could get a little book corner and have them read for a certain amount of time. Downtime. If they're not napping anymore, it can be called, like I was saying, quiet time or downtime, but everyone's in their own room, everyone's having their own time, whether it is reading a book or writing or just chilling. And then when you're not in your work block, have some fun with them. Let them see that when you get that time to work and you can get those things done, then you can shift gears and you can be present and ready for them. All they want is your attention, but they don't need it 24 seven. That's something that, that's a myth that we think, that's a lie that we believe that we have to constantly be with them 24 seven and give them our full undivided attention. That's not true. They don't even care for that. They just wanna know that you are present in the time that you have with them and that you care, right? And so give them those undi that in undivided attention for a short time and they will just be happy with that for sure. And it will help them to, let you have that work block because they know if I give her this much time for the work block, then she has this time to spend with me. Okay. The last thing I wanted to talk about today when it comes to getting work done is how I plan my time. Uh, because maybe it'll come help you kind of brainstorm what could work for you in prioritizing the things that you have to get done. Right. And so for me, I have created some theme days because I really do need to, I don't have much time. I have only pockets of time. So I need to prioritize the few things I have to get done in order to move my business forward. And so the first thing is this podcast. It's planning for this podcast, right? And so Mondays are my podcast day. Now, it is when I'm at parkour for those two hours, I do all my podcast planning. I create content. I write my outlines. I ask people if they want to be interviewed by me or I ask to be interviewed by people or whatever. That is my podcast planning day. Now, I don't record that day but I do all the planning. And then my second day is marketing day. Now this is on Wednesdays while my boys are at parkour. I go to parkour with them. I pull out my computer and I do my email marketing. So I write emails to all of you and then I will put some pins on Pinterest and I will work on collaborations. If I'm working with someone else, if we're doing a workshop together or if I'm in a bundle or a giveaway like we have this week going on, then I work on all of that on Wednesdays. All right. And then I have admin days. So I do some little admin tasks like inbox zero, right? I want to make sure my inbox, my emails are cleared out. I don't like clutter. <laughs> so I go in there on Fridays, usually for about an hour. And then Sunday evenings, when my oldest is at youth group, I have two hours there. So I go to a coffee shop, I do my admin work, and then I pick them up from youth group. And so I just do those random things like website maintenance or um, answering emails or uh, to do like creating my to-do list or my plan for the next week or whatever it is. So those, those kind of little tasky things that 
kind of boggle up your week, I actually put them into a day. So if they're not urgent, they go on a list and I get as much as I can get done in those admin times. So that in itself is about six hours. So I do two hours on Monday, two hours on Wednesday, two hours on Sunday. So I guess seven hours because then like an hour on Friday. So now I do work a little bit more than that here and there as well. And then I also have what I call a project day once a month. And that could be just a few hours. Sometimes it's a whole day. Usually it's a Saturday. I don't really like giving up my weekends. But at the same time, it's one of those days where my husband's like, I can go take the boys here and there, or we'll have fun. You go do your thing. And it gives me that designated time to work on projects. Projects are a little harder to put into pockets of time. And so for me, like writing, big writing projects or creating programs or uh, you know, that kind of a thing, I'd rather have just a set amount of time to be able to do that. And that's what my once a month project day is used for. So that's how I plan my time. Those are my theme days. And then also along with that, I use Asana for my project management system. Now, I don't care what system you use, but having a project management system is huge because it helps you organize everything. So my theme days are in there with my tasks, I've linked things. I have everything right there in front of me. So I don't have to think about what I need to do or how I need to do it. It's all right there. And so I need to do a separate episode on just a project management system as a whole and how I organize everything up inside. But that is an important piece of the puzzle in order to get work done efficiently. So with that, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope this episode helped open your mind to being creative and finding pockets of time to work on your online business because you can. You do have that time, I promise you. We all have 24 hours in a day. It's a matter of how we structure them. And it's a matter of how we communicate to both our kids and our spouses. So remember, if you had a full-time nine-to-five job in an office, you'd go to work at nine, Work while you're there and come home at five, right? So you get flexibility with what you do because you work at home. But I know it's hard working at home sometimes. But if you can discipline yourself to create the schedule you need and you train your kids on what you to do while you're working, I promise you they will follow along. It might take some time. It takes habit creation for them just like for us. But flexibility is key. Sometimes there are emergencies you need to tend to but help your kids understand your work and how they can help you get it done efficiently so you can spend more time with them and they will appreciate it too. Now, I would love to hear if you have any other ideas that have helped you get work done. So pop into Simplicity and Motherhood and let me know. It's our free Facebook group and the only place that I hang out on social media anymore. So go search it up, Simplicity and Motherhood. There's a link in the show notes and I want to hear all your ideas. But for now, In all things I pray, you just run your race. I believe in you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a great time and I hope you did too. Before we go though, make sure you follow the podcast on your favorite listening platform if you haven't already. If you resonate with this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or share it with a friend as this helps grow the podcast. Also, if you're not a part of Simplicity and Motherhood, consider joining us. It's a free online community built to provide support and encouragement so you can create balance and live intentionally as you go after your biggest goals, God's way. Head on over to redhotmindset.com for more resources and to find the link to join the community. In all things I pray, you just run your race. I believe in you.